time for the finals and I'm gonna draw first again. Whoa, Swamp Swamp Colonian Tusker. Hmm. This hand is actually quite interesting. With a Croc Cygnus, a Blightcaster, Death Gaze, Cockatrice, and Mark of the Vampire, we have a pretty reasonable shot at winning the game if we draw two lands, and I kind of like this hand. It it's really unlikely that we lose early, and it has a great late game with Blightcaster, two auras, a, de a, a Death Touch creature, and even the Tusker is going to be good if once it comes down. I'm going to keep this. Might be a bit greedy, but this is the finals, and our deck isn't super good or anything, so I like to be a bit um, optimistic about things. In the end, mulliganing to six might not be might not be a better might not yield better results. Almost there. Uh, we just need a forest. <laughs> Okay, we are taking things slow, but our opponent also doesn't have anything. He kept 7 and just doesn't do anything. Looks like. Blightcaster should be amazing against blue-white. A Johnny's Chosen looks kind of scary as well, though. Uh, enchantment, then he gets a cat. Yeah, okay. I think we still just run out the Blightcaster. We wanted to um, trigger as much as possible, and even if our opponent plays an aura and gets a 2-2, two -two, then we can still Croc Cygnus and kill the 2-2. Two -two. I would expect the most auras to be cards like Pacifism or Claustrophobia, so nothing too threatening. Mark of the Empire doesn't look too amazing against blue-white though. Okay, so it is actually a somewhat more threatening card simply because it might make his a Johnny's Chosen survive our Croc Sickness or he moves it over and gets a 3-5 yeah that's also fine So I guess it might have been better to kill the Chosen immediately because now we have a 3-5 cat to worry about. I still think that it's better to wait uh, with our auras until we can actually kill something with the Blightcaster trigger. The Blightcaster should be reasonably good against blue-white. Let's kill this. There is pay no heed to prevent damage to your creatures, but would have been surprised to see that. Another swamp is not what I was looking for. We have 6 mana, so next turn we could Quark Sickness and Mark of the Vampire. Which I kind of like as a backup plan, even if we take 7 here. The fact that our opponent played a toughness enhancing aura and moved it to his cat was kind of the worst case that could happen to us, so... Oh wow, that's pretty insane. So the cat is a 3-5, but it's definitely the worst creature he has. We Croc Cygnus. A Sarah Angel and give the other Sarah Angel minus two minus two. Yes. 
Then we mark of the vampire this and give this other server angel minus two minus two. And then we attack for four, gaining four in the process. Now we could get time apt here. There's quite a lot of things that can happen. We did beat well we have a Johnny's chosen and two Sarah Angels in our opponent's graveyard already though. I'm gonna try to attack here. Uh oh wait. There is always celestial flare. Always the celestial flare to worry about. This is the first time that our opponent could have cast it, I think. And previously there was no reason for him to do so. Don't think that we want to lose Blightcaster to Celestial Flare, to be honest. I'm not gonna attack with it. There's an argument to be made for casting Woodwaller here. Because we might want to sacrifice that to Celestial Flare. But I'm still gonna run out Mana Ref Sliver. I think that if we don't draw a forest here, it's rather unlikely to be... Oh yeah, that's probably just claustrophobia. No. It's a water servant. Um, what I was going to say is, if we don't draw forests for the rest of the game, then we are just naturally drawing more spells. Uh, which is also great for us. If our opponent thinks that we are not playing around Celestial Flare, then he attacks with a cat. But because we've shown our willingness to do so, he's better off not attacking because we would double block and that puts him in a, in a pretty bad spot. I would love to keep the Mana Rift Sliver around somehow to play around Celestial Flare a little more, but I think we are we are fine the way things are. We can start keeping up Mana Reft Sliver and the activated ability of Rudwalla starting next turn. Once we figured out what to do with against the Water Servant. It's pretty difficult to kill the kill the Water Servant. And doing so while playing around Celestial Flare is definitely not the not the easiest task. Okay, so the Water Servant is attacking and it's effectively a 6-1 at most. We could double block with Blightcaster and Rumbling Bailoth, and then opponent still either trades with one of our creatures or just bounces off, which he can't really do because we have a Life Linker in play. The question is if we want to trade Blightcaster for Water Servant. That just doesn't seem too amazing. On the other hand, we can't really take six here. I don't like that at all. We would need to attack next turn if that was if that's what what our plan was and that just seems pretty bad. Now I'm going to go for the double block and see what he has. It's quite possible that our opponent was holding some two toughness flyers or maybe one one two toughness flyer. And we are now losing the option to to kill it by allowing our black caster to, to die. Our opponent doesn't know that we aren't still holding a holding an enchantment or not. Yeah, there's the celestial flare, so at least uh we didn't throw the blight caster under the bus when given the chance. Still not clear if if this is sufficient to to win here. 
sadly don't have a trick like a ring flash or something to really make a great trade out of this combat. But at least we're up to 12 again. A witch stalker. Yeah, that can't be worse than a Colonial Tusker. Yeah, we can't we can't attack with Root while our, our opponent just even if he doesn't call the bluff um and lets it through, then we are soft to a counterattack, so no reason to do that. It's pretty unlikely that our opponent plays a blue spell during our turn, but if he does, our witch stalker grows. We are seeing an attack here, which is interesting. The cat trades with witch stalker if we double block, and we could block with everything playing around another Celestial Flare, maybe. Yeah, I'm just gonna let him show me a trick. This person would walla would be kind of awkward because Witch Stalker dies, but doesn't seem like the end of the world. I also kind of want to force his hand. Uh, four cards is a lot, and I have no idea what he's up to. Okay, it looks like he just wants to kill the Witch Stalker. Which is a fine trade. We're trading our 3-3 three, three for his 3-5. And his 3-5 held back our 4-4 four, four and our 3-3 three, three at the same time. Okay, that was his master plan. I'll allow it. And Arcanum Answer on Celestial Flare. Okay, so now we definitely know that he has a Celestial Flare. Both of these cards aren't amazing though. Um, simply because the cards our opponent got back weren't amazing either. I'm gonna slam for 4 here. Oh no, I can't even pump. That's horrible. No, I can't do that. Then I'll just have to stay back, play a Tusker, and I'm actually going to not play the Mystic this turn to keep open the Rudewalla activation. If my opponent creates a 3 5 here, I definitely need a 4 4 to block. Okay, and there's Train Connor. That's a card that's a little more threatening now because it's just threatening 4 damage a turn. Might also see the Divine Favor come down immediately. Yeah. So now I have a pretty nice bluff available to me um, attacking with Colonial Tusker into Train Condor because if my opponent blocks the Tusker and we have a trick, then we get rid of the Condor and the Divine Favor, and because we are attacking with Woodwalla also, there isn't anything that can save our opponent. On the other hand, it doesn't look like we are attack winning this by, by racing, so yeah, we, we kind of want our opponent to play his Celestial Flare so that if we draw another Death Gaze Cockatrice, a Sanger Vampire, or the Corpse Hauler, that we can actually safely block his Flyer. Which means we kind of have to try everything in our power to get that Celestial Flare out of our opponent's hand. Oh, Mind Rod. Um, that makes it even more interesting to force his hand. 
It's not an attack I'm proud of, but I'm going to try it. Wow, he just blocks it. That's like, that's really gutsy. Like, if we have any trick here, then his best creature on the board just dies. Okay, he did have to, well, if he wanted to a Celestial Flare, then he would have done, had to do it after combat damage, but he, well, basically declined to do so. Um, which is okay, I'm not going to play Mind Rot, because if I draw a flyer, I need to get that Celestial Flare out of his hand. Still can barely believe that he blocked there, but that's what happened. Okay, we are taking six in the air now. A Kermansa isn't attacking, so that's that's good. Would have been kind of difficult to block also. And now we need to top deck a flyer to stay alive. That's not it. We can basically concede. Well, let's mind rot him, get some more information. I think it's fine for him to know that we have a mind rot. I would like to see what he has here. A sea kite, so that's some nice information. We weren't beating that. Okay. So all these plus one plus three things definitely weren't a naturalize on our side. Shrivel is an interesting card to have. There is a trained condor at least, so so shrivel can't be too bad. And if he's playing Archeomancer and Oromancer, the rest seems uh, quite reasonable. Don't think the other cards are all that amazing. Now, I still like what we are working with. Although his deck is really, really good. Um, just, well, just a lot of great cards, to be honest. Maybe we can do without Into the Wilds and Fire Shrieker. And hopefully we can draw into some of the more, um, yeah, flyer defending parts of our deck. And it Minotaur seems pretty awful. Um, his, his ground creatures are just really bad, and Unit Minotaur has never beaten anybody down so that would allow us to keep into the wilds for the long game and also as another aura to trigger blight cast right kind of like that keeping in mark of the vampire might not seem great against blue white but we do have the witch stalker to put it on and later on in the game it's going to be might might uh, save us some uh, life that would have lost us the race so I think it's it's reasonable to keep that. I'm taking out Fire Shrieker because I don't want to run into his uh, tricks with too many cards. I'm still going to draw first. Uh, he he hasn't shown a deck that is capable of killing us early, so I'm not playing first. Don't know yet if our opponent is keeping, but we have to mulligan this. We did keep a greedy hand last uh, game, but this is unkeepable. This is a lot better. Not a lot of gas, but double green, double black with a turn to witch soccer is pretty much a very good six card hand. We just need to draw some spells, of course, but we have a great opportunity to just ramp into our many four drops. Oh boy, Essence Scatter. That's pretty bad for us, looking at our hand. I think it was correct to just run it out there because we had no indication that something like this could happen. But now we are just getting beaten pretty badly. If we had seen the Essence Scatter 
previously, I think it would have been fine to play around it, but we hadn't, so I think it wasn't really necessary to do so. I'm gonna block here in the hopes of, of just finding something that deals with scroll, scroll Thief. Yeah, that was awful. I mean, if if we play around Essence Scatter, we attack for one. Our opponent drops Scroll Thief, and we just drop the Witch Stalker, and the Scroll Thief doesn't do anything. We have a three three in play. It's still not great, but it's a lot better than what we are yet at now. We are getting two spells out of our opponent here: Water Servant and Frost Breath. Interesting choice not to Frost Breath. Well. I assume that opponent wanted to see if we had something larger to play, which he wanted to shut down for a couple of turns. Yeah, and this is the point where this game is probably just over. Can't see beating that. We don't have a windstorm. Deathcase Cockatrice is the card that we w would want to draw here. And we need our opponent to just get stuck on lands for a while. Don't have the best feeling about this game. Plant number four, maybe a Johnny's Chosen. At this point, beating five spells is almost impossible. This looks like Nefalia Seakite is coming down. And then there might be multiple Terra Angels still left in our opponent's hand. So I'm just gonna wait for him to just uh, kill us here. It's interesting that it's correct to make give Squall Thief flying against Briarpack Alpha, but incorrect against Windstorm. Okay, yeah, probably the right play. There is an argument to be made that uh, letting our opponent go first allowed him to Essence Scatter in the first place. On the other hand, we had the choice to play around Essence Scatter but didn't. But that was largely because we didn't see one in game one where we actually got to see his whole hand and where he just didn't play an Essence Scatter at all. So I think it was warranted to just play the Witch Stalker there because we we were looking at a weak hand that needed all the help it could get and the three extra damage might have made a difference. We also didn't know what our opponent was up to so uh, after a mul the mulligan on his uh, side of the board it could have just as easily been um, yeah, a weak draw and that me meant an early Witch Stalker just uh, deals nine damage or whatever. Yeah, that wasn't wasn't a great game to end the draft with, but that's what happens sometimes. We did draw like in our seventeen land, Mystic, Mana Ref Sliver deck, we drew two other spells, so I don't even know how many lands I had here. Let's see. This is nine lands plus two is eleven. Thirteen mana sources and two spells after keeping um Mystic, four lands, and a witch stalker. Yeah, that's of course uh, a bit unlucky, but the da this danger um, was definitely there with our deck. I, with this draw, I don't think we win even if we have the witch stalker uh, and and can stop the squirrel thief. 
uh, as you can see, we didn't even find a way to beat Squall Thief Train Condor, which is kind of embarrassing, uh, given that our opponent didn't really do much else for the rest of the game. But, uh, well, that's not something in our power. Um, good. I'll do the recap video, and then I'll see you in two weeks, I guess. Bye-bye.